race-based medications, or really right now we're only talking about the case of one, although we're likely to see others coming through the pipeline probably fairly soon. Um, but these are basically medications where pharmaceutical researchers have found that they're more effective in certain populations, certain racial groups than others. That's really the only thing that we can say uh, defines what a race-based drug is. The, the research process that led up to the marketing of, of Bidil is really an interesting story because, you know, to outsiders it may seem that the researchers set out to look for some cure for heart disease among blacks that was going to be effective. But in fact, that's not at all the case. What happened was the researchers were experimenting with this drug and it didn't seem to be very successful in their trials. And it looked like they were pretty much going to have to scrap the whole project until somebody went through the data again and looking at it more closely and sort of trying to parse it out and look for some kind of subgroup that they might say the drug was effective for, they found, well, it seems to be doing better in African Americans than in other people in our study sample. Now, they didn't have a lot of blacks in their study sample. And so they said, well, you know, to check this out, let's, let's study this more closely. But what they decided to do was then do a study of only blacks and see how African Americans reacted to this drug. If you wanted to make the, a strong case that your drug worked better for one race than for another, it's obvious that you would try to make a comparison. But in order to gain FDA approval, all the pharmaceutical company had to do was to show that it worked at least in this population, that it was at least good enough to be marketed to that population. Um, and you know, it seems to have been persuasive. Looking at uh, drug outcomes, we take into consideration whether people are smokers or not smokers. Um, we take into account the kind of uh, access to health care that they have. So I would say that already uh, research, medical research does tend to take into account um, factors uh, related to socioeconomic background, uh, lifestyles, and behaviors when it comes to studying drug efficacy. Um, but I think what is important to do is to realize how um, crucial those kinds of factors are in health, in health outcomes, that we can draw much clearer links and causal mechanisms between those kinds of social factors than we can when we start talking about race. Because of course, when we're talking about a person's racial group, we're talking about a very, um, a very fuzzy concept of their ancestry, a fuzzy concept of what it might mean for their biology, um, specifically with respect to African Americans. Of course, when we're talking about blacks, we're talking about people with a very multiracial ancestry um, for the majority of African Americans. So even to kind of suggest that African Americans as a group are some cohesive group that shares uh, certain qualities that are in distinction to the rest of the population, uh, it's a pretty poor assumption, again, given the roots and the, histo the history of the African American population in the United States. In the established medical community, there's a great deal of, of uncertainty and debate and disagreement on the topic of uh, how race is related to biology and to medicine. Um, I don't think there's any consensus position. I think in, in flagship journals, like the New England Journal of Medicine, this has been a topic of debate. Uh, people have written articles arguing on all sides of this. So I think it's something that's very much in flux. But I think that um, if we turn away from the people who are kind of in the spotlight debating these issues and writing articles for journals and sort of look at uh, maybe what you would say the rank and file of medical practitioners, sort of everyday people going about their, their business and, and trying to use, um, you know, just, uh, you know, practicing uh, medicine without being particularly attuned to debates about race, I think that there, there's a real precedent and a growing acceptance of the idea that race should be a diagnostic tool in medicine. I think it's really fascinating to think about what the, the future of the, the Bidil debate will be. I think in the broader context that we are in a period where we're seeing a growing acceptance more generally of the idea that uh, race should be a factor in how we approach medicine. So if you think of Bidil as a part of that, I, my tendency would be to say that we're just going to get more and more comfortable with the idea of race-based drugs, and so it's going to become less controversial with time. I think that probably having the drug out there in the market, if it has the potential to help some people, it's probably a good thing, a positive thing, that the FDA has approved it. However, labeling it 
effectively an African-American drug, I don't think, is a positive outcome. Again, I think it's going to limit that, um, people's access to the drug. There are going to be people who could benefit from it. Um, again, there'll be blacks who aren't really going to react well to it, but probably whose doctors are going to impose it on them nonetheless, maybe for longer than they, they should. Um, so I think that while the drug in itself, having that choice out there in the market is a positive, I think that the FDA should be thinking um, more carefully or should reconsider, at least for the future, whether they really want to be positioning these drugs as race-targeted drugs.